Welcome to the Daily Business and Finance Show. In today's episode, we delve into the surge in cannabis stocks following VP Kamala Harris's call for immediate rescheduling. We'll also discuss the unprecedented inversion of the yield curve and potential implications. Stay tuned as we explore U.S.'s consideration of a rule to expedite closure of certain coal plants and Walmart's surprising deal on Apple's MacBook Air. We'll touch on Nippon Steel's refusal to negotiate with Cleveland Cliffs on a potential deal and Goldman Sachs prediction for the next phases in AI trade. Could it be another NVIDIA? In dividend news, American Tower announces a $1.62 payout while real estate stocks take a hit after NAR agrees to a hefty $418 million settlement over commission suits. Lastly, don't miss our roundup of top 10 year to date large cap stocks boasting 5% or greater dividend yield. Stay tuned after this short ad break for these stories and more. Stocks in the United States related to marijuana, such as Q-Relief Holdings and Air Wellness, experienced an increase following a statement by Vice President Kamala Harris. She urged the Drug Enforcement Administration to reclassify cannabis as a substance with lower risk. This action is perceived as the most recent attempt by the government to back up this industry. The vice president's remarks were delivered during a gathering with individuals who had been pardoned for offenses linked to cannabis. Yields on U.S. Treasury bonds have seen a significant increase this week, driven by heightened inflation data. The inversion of the yield curve for two-year and 10-year Treasury bonds has set a new record for consecutive days of inversion. Both are approaching their peak levels from 2024, with the yield on the two-year bond just below 4.76% and the yield on the 10-year bond nearing an exceedance of 4.35%. This pattern affects fixed income as well as exchange-traded funds focused on treasuries, given that bond prices and yields have an inverse relationship. The administration under President Biden is contemplating a strategy to shut down American coal-fired power plants two years ahead of schedule. This move could have significant effects on utilities and coal corporations. The plan would necessitate the early retirement of plants that lack carbon removal technology, which could potentially impact rural electric cooperatives and businesses such as Duke Energy, Southern Company, and Talon Energy. This transition may also influence the stock values of coal producers. Walmart has recently begun offering Apple's MacBook Air, equipped with the M1 chip. This high-performance system, designed by Apple itself, is priced at $699. This decision is in line with Walmart's approach to provide premium brands to its customers, both in physical stores and online. The MacBook Air, which operates without a fan, ensures silent operation and remains compatible with macOS software despite the absence of Intel chips. The pursuit of U.S. Steel by Nippon Steel, with a particular focus on the Big River plant located in Arkansas, has encountered an obstacle. This comes as Lorenzo Goncalves, the CEO of Cleveland Cliffs, discloses that no discussions have occurred. In the face of union resistance and a preference for American ownership expressed by the Biden administration, Nippon stands firm in defending its proposed takeover. Meanwhile, shares in U.S. Steel persist in their downward trend. Goldman Sachs forecasts the upcoming phases of the artificial intelligence, or AI, trade in light of NVIDIA's triumph. The second phase zeroes in on AI infrastructure stocks such as Broadcom, Amazon, and Cisco Systems. The third phase encompasses businesses incorporating AI to enhance revenue streams, potential players include Intuit and ServiceNow. The concluding phase revolves around augmenting business productivity via AI, especially within labor-intensive sectors. For a wider exposure to the stages of the AI economy, Goldman recommends contemplating exchange-traded funds that concentrate on AI. The American Tower Corporation has declared a quarterly dividend of $1.62 per share. This is a reduction from the fourth quarter of 2023's $1.70 per share. However, the company expects to uphold a comparable annual dividend payout in 2024 as it did in 2023. This information is accompanied by reports of unmet earnings for the fourth quarter, but there is positive forecast for 2024. The National Association of Realtors, also known as NAR, has agreed to pay a sum of $418 million over the course of four years. 
This is in order to settle claims of collusion that were aimed at maintaining high agent commissions. Following this news, there was a significant drop in shares for real estate firms such as Redfin, Zillow Group, and Compass. The settlement also necessitates that NAR make revisions to their regulations which could potentially result in lower costs for selling homes. From mid-July onwards, the agreement could put an end to upfront offers being made to buyers' agents. This would allow buyers the opportunity to negotiate directly with their agents. As the markets reach their peak, those investors who are in search of safety and income are now shifting their focus to dividend stocks. The top 10 performers for the first quarter of 2024, according to Seeking Alpha, include Altria Group, Oniac Incorporated, NatWest Group, American Financial Group, Barclays Public Limited Company, Western Midstream Partners Limited Partnership, Credit Corp Limited, Stellantis NV, Banco Bilbao Vizcaya Argentaria Sociedad Anonima, and joint stock company KSB.KZ. If you're considering a diversified approach to dividend investing, then take into account the six largest dividend-focused exchange-traded funds of 2024. And that's a wrap on the Daily Business and Finance Show. Stay informed, stay invested. Until next time, keep the ledger balanced and your portfolio diversified. I'm Montgomery Jones. And I'm Amalia Dupre. Until tomorrow dawns, take care and goodbye for now. This content is sourced from the Seeking Alpha website, so support our podcast by becoming a Seeking Alpha Premium subscriber. See the show notes page for links to sign up. This episode is produced by Classic Studios. This podcast provides information only and should not be construed as financial or business advice. Check out our other podcasts in our network at classicstudios.com.